uh, I'm excited for this show. It's uh, it's 9-11. 9-11. Wow. What a day, right? What a freaking day. I, I remember exactly where I was when that first uh, plane hit the towers. So, uh, you know, this day, it, it's... It's, 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 it's one of those days where as time moves on, you kind of, you know, you hear people tell their, their stories. And I always hear something new. Uh, I, I got down a conspiracy theory rabbit hole earlier today. Right? Not you. Twitter. Not, not yeah. you. <laughs> well, I, not me personally, no. But like, so I was on Twitter and, you know, obviously it was trending. So I click on it and I scroll down a couple and I see one guy who's like, I used to believe it was a conspiracy. And then I got got help and then i clicked on that thread and i kind of read some things and it was just really interesting to see you know random twitter people i don't know if they're bots or not don't really care but just just the back and forth conversation that they were having was kind of cool you know I th- we, we talk about this every year we do this because we don't want to be um callous because there's some people out there because if we want to hear from you if you want to share uh where you were because like Dion and i were talking about in our pre-show everyone remembers where they were even if you were in the third grade, I'm assuming that came from Chelsea. Uh, so yep. that went to the third grade. Uh, everyone remembers where they were. So if you if you want to talk about it, if you want to share a memory or a moment, maybe uh, you lost someone in the towers. If this is a time you want to share that, we always want to be open to that. When it comes to me and Dion, and I've talked about this on several occasions. I've, you guys have heard me talk about it. I ignore all news if I can on 9-11. Just because for me, and you guys know, if you're a fan of the show, you've been watching, if you've been listening to the podcast, you know how much I love this country, flaws and all. It is always a heartbreaking thing for me to even imagine it. As And I was talking with a friend today, standing there in a warehouse. I worked for a company. All of us rushed to this warehouse. They, they pulled it. If some of you old enough to remember back in school when they would have the TV on the cart, the TV cart. And someone pulled a TV card out to the warehouse so everybody could stand there and watch. And they got it out in time for us to see the second plane go. And just to, like, it chokes me up now. And to see that and to uh, have to relive that again, even though I wasn't on that block and I didn't lose anyone, as far as I know, lose anyone in that tower. It's a heart, heart-wrenching heart thing for me. Um, and I, I couldn't imagine dealing with this if I did have loved ones in the tower if I was there on that street that day, if I was just a New Yorker, I, I just couldn't imagine it. And to the, the callous way for me that the media exploits it is what I'm going to call it every single year with the footage and the, and the, and the retelling of the stories over and over again is too much to me, for me. So I, I really, really try to avoid all things every single year on this day when it comes to that. Um, DraftKings got in trouble earlier today because they had a never forget parlay where they put the New York Mets, the New York uh, Yankees and the New York Jets in a three team betting parlay as, as sort of a way to commemorate the uh, the evening. And that was trending on Twitter as well as, you know, people were like how, you know, you shouldn't be marketing to remember 9-11 this way and so on and so forth, which, you know. I, hey, I get it. If you're if you're working at DraftKings, you you're not thinking that hey maybe this might affect people emotionally. You're just thinking oh it's New York and you know pride or whatever. Granted, I don't know why anybody would bet on that parlay. The Mets and the Yankees are terrible this year, and the Jets lost Aaron Rodgers in the first quarter, so they're not going to be any good this year either. So it was just a dumb, you know, young person who doesn't understand the gravity of that that day. And, and, and I, I hope that it was someone Chelsea's age who was in third grade who may not understand what that day means to so many people older than them. But it is, does this person run DraftKings? Because someone above that idiot has to be able to say, come on, bro, d- do better. Or if this was your third fuck up, put your shit in the box and get out. <laughs> because this <laughs> this is that is so I can't think I probably could if I sat here for a minute. That's probably the most callous thing I've heard someone trying to do in terms of trying to make money off of a national disaster like that. I mean, the only thing I can think of more is 
whenever Time Life would run the fucking stupid magazines or books that they would sell about the Vietnam War or, or, or Pearl Harbor, like those commercials all of a sudden would pop up right around, you know, the anniversary of the mm-hmm. bombing of Pearl Harbor, that type of thing. I have always, always found a, a strong distaste for taking advantage of people's pain uh, in, in that way. And I'm a capitalist and all, but damn it, <laughs> fucking hey. Is there not a fucking line? You're not a bookie in the alley waiting to break people's legs because they uh, Joey D was short on 20 bucks he owes you from the Jets game. You are a public company. I Jesus find that Christ, to, man. I find that to be hilarious coming from, from you as a capitalist to where you think that there are certain things that you can't capitalize on. Whereas, you know, me, I'm like, it's, it's all fair game. If somebody's going to, if you're going to, if you're going to sell it, people are going to buy it. Right. And this has been our, our, our biggest debate on this show is when is too much, too much. And for here, you to say that a, a national dis- disaster like that is too much for you. Where I look at it is I remember that day uh, and the weeks after how everybody was so patriotic, except for mm-hmm. if, if you were a Muslim. And I had a lot of I, I had a lot of Muslim friends in a, in high school, and I saw how this affected them. It, it, it's one of those things where I get what DraftKings was trying to do, and I get the pushback from it. But at the end of the day, it's it's it's, it's capitalism. It's, it's it's there's nothing more American than that. So I you know, well, I'm not saying, and I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying for this for me. And I'm people who are older than me who went through their own tragedies. There's people who's still walking around who lived through Pearl Harbor, who probably thought they would never see anything like that happen ever again. Um, but for me, there is a line. And again, as a capitalist and a proud one, you know, other than fucking selling, you know, say slave labor and that type of thing. This is this is my this is my fucking line. And if I'm if I'm running a public company like DraftKings, what, you gotta have a fucking line, man. It can't be let's put a three team parlay all the New York teams together and see if we can make a quick buck off of people's pain. Because what jackass, maybe Joey D over there, the same dude got his legs broken by the bookie back in the day, is over there. You know what? Uh, 9-11, I think a perfect bet to make would be uh, this three team parlay <laughs> of all the New York teams. This would be uh, this is the fucking way to go today. Then who the fuck is making this bet? <laughs> One guy actually said I put 1776 on the 911 parlay. Hashtag never forget. Well, he, he got his money refunded because they canceled the, the parlay. But this is, this it's just one of, the, it's one of those things, man, where if you live in this country, man, there's always going to be a person out there scheming and plotting to make a buck. I mean, it whether it's the Red Cross or DraftKings or, or the people who go and buy up a shit ton of water and try to sell it during, you know, uh, times of crisis. You know, there's always going to be those people in this country because that's what we promote here. It's not about community. It's It's about Hey, if I can if I can make money off of it, I'm gonna make money off of it. Well, here's here's where I'll push back on that. And for anybody out there who wants to have a let us know what's going on or anything, please please let us know how you feeling about the day. Or if you're agreeing or disagreeing. I see uh Wade jumped in and said hello and he said, Hey man, bro, uh can't express it. So I think he's agreeing with me there. What I would say is my only pushback on that is you touched on it earlier, and we've touched on this on the show before. The only sense of community that stands out or did stand out was during that time period. And we talked about it before. That's where I don't care what color your skin was, as long as you didn't have a Middle Eastern accent or war, you know, whatever, or didn't you weren't Islamic or, you know, whatever people felt about that region of the world, everybody rode, was riding together on that. And so we were a sense of community at that point in time when that happened. And we should still, if no other day, have some type of sense of fucking community on this day every year, if no other day. You want to bet on when Jesus was born? Fine. You want to bet on if Santa Claus is going to slip and break his neck before he can get down that fucking chimney? Fine. If you want to bet that the uh, tooth fairy fucks the kid's mom before he takes the fucking money or leaves the money, whatever, whatever it is you want to do, bro, whatever it is you want to bastardize, feel free <laughs> to do it. Just don't touch this day. 
I see, and to me, I just find that to be so hypocritical. Like, 9-11 isn't above any other, you know, if you, <laughs> you, you literally just put 9-11 above Jesus <laughs> when it comes to making a dollar, which I find to be absolutely ridiculous. No, I put it, no, I put it above that because, <laughs> no, I put it above that because everyone doesn't vibe with Christmas. Everyone doesn't vibe with, with Christianity. Everyone doesn't and vibe not with everybody- church. So, okay, not right, everybody right. not everybody vibes with the story around 9-11. That was part of the conspiracy theory rabbit Yeah, but no one's talking of, about the story around 9-11. We're talking about the people that actually died. Right. But, I, and, and I understand that. That was a, a tragedy. One of the cool stories that I saw today was there was a guy who worked for Stanley Morgan, which was in uh, the South Tower. Um, he used to have a megaphone and he would, you know, he ignored... Because they, the people in the North, when the North Tower got hit, they told people to stay in place, and that everything was A-OK. And he, he had been running these emergency drills for years, and he got on his megaphone and he ushered uh, all of the Stanley Morgan employees out. It was, uh, I think, 20, either 22 or 2,300 people that he got out of those offices uh, in time to save their lives. And unfortunately, he went back into the tower to try and help more people. And that's when it all came down on top of him and he passed away. But it was just one of those, you know, it's, it's one of those things where the story around it, whether you believe the conspiracy theory or not, the tragedy of everyone losing their lives and the way that they lost their lives is really, really sad. But for me, as I look at that event and I have a hard time believing the government's story about it. How much was redacted from the 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 nine eleven report, and just just the the coincidences surrounding this event. Just it, if you live in America and if you understand how our government works, it is just extremely fishy that please all these things went. Please don't went, go down the rabbit <laughs> hole where the government is is the one who perpetrated this on its own citizens. I'm just saying it, it, they capitalized a great deal off of it in the aftermath and and and, and the years since. That's all I'm saying. We we'll go to some comments here before we continue on. Uh, thank everybody for joining us. I see Bruce is with us. What's good? Bruce says he was in junior high school and watched a lot of the news uh, on my free periods at home. Uh, Wade is with us, I mentioned before. Looks like Michelle is with us. Michelle, what's good? Uh, you're looking great in those photos. I saw the photos that you took with Dion uh, after his after the show he did on Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, on Saturday. So looking good there, Michelle. Mary's with us as usual. I know Chelsea's in here. Uh, Dion cleared this up, one up for me, but Facebook user says, I was in Orlando sleep. My mother, who's in the Army, was on travel duty. She had gotten a plane to North Carolina so she could wake me up and with a call and says, hey, baby, I hear you. You sound like you're just waking up. I just want you to know I'm OK. Immediately, I was worried. Why is my calling and telling me this? Must be something wrong. She tells me that she'll call me right back. So I turn on the TV. I was blown away. That was Tanika Jenkins. What's up, Tanika? Thank you for joining us. She was 18. OK. So, yeah, everyone. So eight, old enough to kind of be blown away as you were. I think even if you were in in. Junior high school, as young as that, as Bruce was. I mean, this was a significant event that happened. I mean, you got to see people coming out of the buildings as well, you know, as you stood there and you watched. This this was something I hope no one ever sees again in their lifetime right now. This was, you couldn't, the closest thing we got to this was, was being taught about Pearl Harbor and what that was like and what that meant to people and and the tragedy that was for people during that time and how they carried that with them going forward and how we got into a war because of it and so on and so forth. I mean, you you just never, ever, you can just never think you ever witnessed that, whether in person or with your own eyes on TV. 